Hey, good morning guys, Anthony, 4 Before Diesel. We're going to have a pretty short discussion about these map filters. So a few things we're gonna cover. Um, obviously, as you can see, the part number, if you, if you wanna purchase one yourself to replace it. Um, cleaning them, so how often you need to clean them, replace them, what they do, and why you replace them. There's a couple of reasons. So we'll sort of try and get through it in an orderly fashion. So let's see how we go. Okay, so the first thing is, what is it? Okay, what is it? We call it the MAP filter, M-A-P, MAP filter. What does that stand for? Manifold Absolute Pressure. Why do we call it that? Because it's in the vacuum line that goes to the MAP sensor. Manifold Absolute Pressure sensor provides information to the ECU, right? So obviously the sensor needs to be clean so that it can give the right information. It may be sensitive, so we don't want to be cleaning that. It's the top. Of, it's a type of sensor that's possibly hard to clean, if that's the best way to put it. So there's a filter in place. Now, what happens with the filters? Couple of things. They're on the intake. Remember. So what's in the intake? You've got a small amount of oil, and you've also got soot from the exhaust gas circulation. See, this EGR thing. It causes a number of problems with a vehicle. It's not just caking up your intake. It affects different sensors and systems in different ways as well. There's a whole lot of downsides to EGR. So one of the things is this filter blocks up. Now, basically, the deal is, just so you know, on a 1KD, the black goes to the top, okay? Black does go to the top when you refit, in case you forget. There's a little clip there. See that little bit of plastic there? That sort of clips in position, and from the passenger side of the vehicle... The best way I can describe it to you is black to the top to the left, okay? So your top vacuum line goes this way to your sensor and the bottom one curls around in a U-shape to your uh, intake. So this may help you if you've pulled it apart watching our um, full EGR intake clean video and you haven't, you know, whatever, watching this one as well. It just adds to your info, adds to your training and hopefully you remember. So that's where it goes. That's what it does. So what's important about it? So inside here, it's fairly empty. There's no one-way valve or anything. There is a flat element, which we'll show you those in a minute because we've cut a few open over the years. We've got a couple here we've kept. We've just kept a few of these, obviously, just what would fit in. Uh, this is, uh, I think it was one container full anyway. So um, we'll show you some of the different problems. We've shown you before in other videos. I suppose this video is going to be a bit more detailed. Um, so we recommend you could probably clean these every 6 to 12 months. Maybe every service is a good idea. If you ever notice your fuel economy is a little bit down or your boost or, you know, responsiveness is a little bit down. Now, the key thing here, you've got to be really careful how you clean them, okay? This is the important part. That's all the important part to the end, as always. That's why I say watch all the videos. Watch them till the end because you might get a bit, oh, you know, he's talking too much. But, you know, and I sort of lose my train of thought. Like now I'm trying to explain this. I'm going to go, where was I? But, you know, you just got to understand there's a whole heap of info and more just comes out later. So every service, every six or 12 months worth cleaning, okay? Now, from a Toyota dealer in Australia, these retail, I think they're about 60 bucks, $58. A lot of people write 58, 58, 58. You probably know already, we include them in our injector kit. In our injector kit, there's a whole heap of things. There's about 20 different components. That's another story. There's other videos of course, if you're interested in that, shoot me a text or give me a call like usual is the way to do it. Um, but this is about if you just want to service and replace and whatever these items. We don't sort of sell small bits and pieces. We'd be flat out packing small parts, you know, an air filter here, an oil filter there, a map filter there. It's not a parts business. We've just got those few large parts kits to help you out. You know, the front wheel bearing kits, the timing belt, big front engine kit with the water pump and everything, and the injector kit. And of course, we can supply dominance and suspension. But all the little bits and pieces, we don't supply. You know, if you need caps for something on the injector job, we've got the caps here. You know what I mean? All that sort of stuff's included. All these small bits and pieces, this can be included with a water pump time belt kit. No problem. The point is, every transaction we do, it takes a lot of time. So we can't just sell you one of these with a markup of five bucks, if you know what I mean. So um, it's just going to kill the time. It's not going to happen. It's not going to pay the bills. So that's why we give you this information to help you out. Happy to give you the information and help you save money. So you're saying get on with it. Okay, let's get on with it. So cleaning them. How do, firstly, how do you clean them? Well, first thing is, you think you're going to clean this one? No. If you see it dirty on the outside, that's the one that's got the cracks. And I don't know if you can see there, those cracks. It's a typical thing. I'll pick another one that's a bit cleaner that's got some cracks perhaps. 
Here you go, here's one that's clean. I see it's got the crack there. Right, so there's a chance you're going to get wrong readings. It's going to leak or make mess, whatever. So don't worry about checking it and cleaning it too much. If you've never checked it or nobody else has changed it, if you've never changed it, just replace it. Do you know what I mean? Um, but once you've replaced it, we don't want you, it's a little rip off thing, you know, 50, 60 bucks. It is a, you know, it is quite expensive. So we don't want you throwing it away every service. You can if you like, that would be ideal, but it's a bit wasteful if you know what I mean. So cleaning, what do you use to clean it? We use any sort of product like this, you know, you could probably use brake cleaner, you could probably even use degreaser. Degreaser may even work better first, but we want it to dry out properly as well. We don't want any of these cleaning fluids to get to the sensor. Remember how important it was to keep that clean. So we use this stuff because it's kind of like, it's really just like thinners, isn't it? And it, it evaporates and dries up really quick. So what you're going to do, you're going to grab that. People will tell you which way you've got to clean it. I'm not going to I'll give you a bit more information later in the video on which way, perhaps, and you can decide whether that matters or not. But basically, what I'm going to say is kind of both ways, if you know what I mean. Now, let's think about it. We said black to the top to the left, right? So the black's the clean side. The grey's the dirty side, if you like, okay? So it would make sense if the dirt came in the grey side, we want to push it back out. So we're going to spray in the black side, right? So... You're going to have, you know, rubber gloves on to protect your fingers. You don't need cleaning stuff on your skin. You don't, really, it's ideal not to breathe it as well. Anything you can smell, it's toxic, okay? It's not good for you. Anyway, there you go. There's a bit of a health tip. So you hold it like this with your gloves on and you can spray with that direct in there like that and just spray and you'll see it'll come out black, black, and it'll slowly come clean. Now, this is the point. It's it. We're not anywhere near the end yet. It might come clean and not be clean. We'll get to that. And there's still really important things about cleaning it. Now these cans don't generally come with this, but if you like, you can attach one, uh, the spray nozzle thing, okay, and then stick it in the hole. So anyway, I'd suggest you clean it that way first, then turn it over and spray back that way, and then turn it over and spray back this way. I don't care how much you spray it again. Um, but hold it in such a way that it's draining out that tube, okay? So see that facing downwards? Because obviously any fluid's gonna go to the bottom, okay? So that's cleaning it. Then ideally to dry it a bit quicker, what we want to do is um, make sure it's dry. So compressed air. So straight away you get your compressed air and you're going to think the same thing to blow this way. We're not talking about which way to blow at this stage. I want to talk about how to blow and the, be careful. This is a warning. If you stick your air blow with a lot of pressure right on there and blow hard, you may kind of destroy the inside of this map filter. Okay, So don't do that at this stage. Basically, what we want to do is use the compressed air from a distance. So you go full blow on the compressed air, but from, see how, you know, you know you might be two or three, depends what air blower nozzle you've got, what, com, what uh, you know, what am I saying? What Yeah, what pressure you've got in your compressor, you know, and how much, what your blower is, what size it is. So it'll vary, but what I'm saying is don't blow too hard because you can blow the, in, the element inside it out of position, which is what we don't want. Now, what do I mean by that? So we've got a couple cut open here. This is probably the best way to show you. So we've got the black side here at the top, okay? And you've got the grey at the bottom. So from looking at this, you can see the element sits... I'll show you the element, okay? So there's an element. It's just a flat bit of material type, you know, whatever. You can see how black it is, okay? I'll show you quickly. I've shown in other videos. We've kept these ones for ages. One's been cleaned, one hasn't. This is what I want to show you. When they're new, they're white, okay? These are white when they're new. One's, as it came out here, yeah, I'll give it a squeeze, I'll show you, and you can work out which one's which. All right, let's say this one's the one that hasn't, and this is one that has. Point is, we gave it a really thorough clean. It doesn't come up that well. So when the vehicle, that's probably 10 years old though, all right? So you can, you can clean it and reuse it a few times. Every approximately three or four years, you just want to replace this sucker so you get the correct readings. And they crack anyway, right? But you're going to replace it before it cracks ideally. So don't base it on, oh, mine's not cracked. It'll be okay for a bit longer because, no, it's caked like that. And if someone's blown compressed air, I'll give you the tip. So it was the black side, the element sits down underneath those, see those four tabs there? It's probably hard for you to see, but I'll use this little spray thing, right? Down the bottom there is where it sits, right? And I can just about push and bend that just for demonstration purposes. Uh, it, won't, it won't quite, but there's about that thick, thickness of that 
underneath the bottom there, right? That's where it sits. So if you were to blow from the black side, which is what you're thinking to push it out the way it came, you may well just push this element out of place, right? Now, when that's sitting in place, it's quite tight. And when it's clean and you blow through it, you've got a bit of a resistance because you're pushing through the filter. That's fine. If it's really hard, it's blocked. If it's a lot resistance, it's about right. It's going to be hard for you to tell because you've only got one to compare to, right? We've got a number to compare to. Right, I've been doing this for years. Clean and replaced many of these. Plenty of R&D on these to see what's going on with them. So, sharing it with you now. If you blow that too hard from the black side, what it'll do, it'll just bend it like that. Right, see, see what I mean? Right, and it's just going to be demonstrating. Kind of, this is the dirt. Give me the clean one. Look at this filthy thing. Getting my hands dirty. We don't want that. Um, right, so look, that's how we've got them out, obviously. Right, you know, they might have been sort of sitting like that or something, right? And what you'll have once you've blown it and it's popped out of position one way or the other with too much air pressure is you'll blow through there and it'll be really easy, no resistance. If you blow through there and you go, and it's just, there's no resistance whatsoever and you've cleaned it and blown it with compressed air, the compressed air is your problem. If you want to avoid wrecking it when you clean it, allow more time. Spray your cleaner through. Okay, let's go back to another one of these. Spray your cleaner through, and then just go let it sit for 10 minutes. Let it sit for 20 minutes, half an hour. Just let it sit like that, so anything, but it'll just evaporate. It needs time because it's a fairly enclosed space, but it will evaporate. Or just go really light with the air, and then let it sit for longer as well, because it ain't going to dry once you put the vacuum lines and put it on the car, right? It's probably not going to affect anything. There's going to be minimal in there because you've used this stuff that evaporates really quickly. Okay, I think that pretty well covers your precautions when cleaning them. It covers why we're cleaning and replacing them. It covers your part number in case you want to go and purchase one. Um, now, there are some different part numbers, and we've got other videos that show the other ones. These cover the 1KDs from about middle of 06 through to 2015 to the end. There is one for the early Hilux 0506 that's a bit different, and it's white, okay? Different angles and stuff, that's all. So you want to make sure you get the right one. That's minimal, you know? There's not many, of that, not many vehicles with those, but we have got a video if you look back through them and with the part number for that one. Now, what else can I tell you? We've covered cleaning, we'll replace it. What else do I need to tell you? Look, put it in the comments if I missed anything and there's anything else you want to know. As you know, I do look at the comments um, and I don't necessarily answer them. Sometimes it's a quick skim through and have a look and check for your answers later because I do answer some questions. I just haven't got time to sit there and answer questions, but I do keep it in mind for the next video, if you know what I mean. So what else do I need to tell you? Um, that's about it, isn't it? While we replace them, they crack. Be careful you don't push the filter out of place. Beware about cleaning them because you'll get the wrong readings, fuel economy, um, you know, a bit, bit sluggish, you know, sort of thing. If you're not getting the right readings to the ECU, it doesn't, it's not doing the right thing then. Um, gee, I think that's it. 13 minutes, not too bad. All right, guys, you know the deal. If you haven't already, subscribe. We've got more awesome information coming your way. Give us a thumbs up if you like this one and you got something out of it. And remember, check out the other videos on our channel. Watch until the end because there's a reason they go till the end, okay? You've got to put up with a bit of this talking, whatever. But like I say, it's all information. Hope you like it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See ya.